Magnificent, majestic and massive. Bluefin tuna swim thousands of miles to British waters from as far away as America. Bluefin tuna migrate vast distances in shoals. They follow the food. In recent years, they've returned to the waters of the UK, especially here in Cornwall. It would appear that stocks are up between three and five times the level they were in 2010, thanks to a, a very aggressive stock recovery plan that was put in place. And if you look at the last time, you know, the fish were here, it was, you we tend to think of it as being warm and cold cycles, but it's not really about water temperature only because these fish can survive in six degrees to 33 degrees. They're incredible in that respect. So I think there's those long-term climatic cycles. We entered a, a warmer phase, if you like, around in the early 2000s. And then the third thing, it probably is a function of climate change. Now that's not the, affecting the bluefin directly, because as I say, they can they can be in the Caribbean or the Mediterranean in the summer, and they can be above the Arctic Circle in the winter. Um, but it's more the prey species that they feed upon, uh, their patterns are changing. The history of fishing for tuna peaked in the 1930s, when the British Tunny Club was formed. It attracted celebrities such as John Wayne and Errol Flynn. Two of the fish caught topped £850. There's a link to our film about the club in the description below. In the 50s, the stock of large bluefin tuna disappeared from UK waters. Political pundit Nigel Farage is a bluefin enthusiast. Speaking to Charlie at the 2022 Game Fair, he says a quota agreed in the Brexit deal offers a great opportunity to exploit the return of the fish. Because of Brexit... Who knew he'd mention that word? So, <laughs> so when the bluefin first turned up in Cornwall, and it literally was about that time, about five or six years ago, suddenly big bluefin tuna were being seen in Cornwall, but we weren't allowed to fish for them because we had zero quota, and you weren't allowed, without any quota, to even target them on Ronald Line. So we have the French, our friends, um, the Spanish, the Spanish, the Portuguese, landing about 25,000 tonnes a year into market and having a thriving sport fishery, and we weren't even allowed to target them on Rodden Line. Once Brexit happened, we became an independent registered state with the global tuna authorities, and last year was the first season we were allowed to go out and catch bluefin tuna. Albeit it's regulated, albeit it's tagged and release. Jerry Rogers of Fast Cats Fishing sails from Falmouth in Cornwall. He's preparing for the tagging season, which starts in the middle of August. He says catching a bluefin tuna is a dream come true for him. It's, it's pretty unexplainable really. It's, um, it, it's Formula One, it's Formula One fishing. Um, and to see those fish, to bring them alongside the boat, to measure them, look at them, photograph them, get your customers to see them, tag the fish and release them is just it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a real bucket list experience for a lot of, a lot of anglers. Um, uh, it's, um, I mean, the, the, the noise when the reel screams off, uh, you know, your, your heart rate goes from resting to, you know, 160 in about five or 10 minutes. The adrenaline surge you get, you know, is huge. The fish will often take between one and 300 yards of line on their first run. Uh, you know, you, you, you don't want to be running around like headless chickens. You need to have a very, you know, measured, calm and practiced response. You're clearing the other gear. You're preparing the angler to step up. And the moment that the angler gets clipped into the harness and then the fish takes the weight, then you really know you're, uh, you know, you're, you're connected to something that's really quite primeval, incredibly powerful. Um, and it's quite an emotional experience for a lot of anglers for their first time. Jerry's customers are excited to have the opportunity to join him. He's absolutely unbelievable. Um, as a boy I'd, and growing up, would have never ever thought it possible. And to see these fish coming in now, they have been for the last, well, at least six years. Jerry obviously knows more. Um, it's, it's great. It can only be a winner for everybody. Anglers and Skippers set up the UK Bluefin Tuna Association four years ago to campaign for recreational fishery. The Angling Trust supports the association. This year it looks like it will be the first year where we have um, chart programs, tagging programs working in 
I think all four home nations. We're, wor- we're working very closely on the English program, the operation in 21. Uh, and this year there's an expanded English program. Uh, Wales and Northern Ireland should come on stream. We're, we're working on that right now. Scotland is doing something a little bit different. Um, but yeah, in terms of building that knowledge base um, to really understand, okay, can we do this in a way that's sort of sustainable, um, you know, economically uh, viable, economically optimal? Um, is there a demand for it? Because it's really, it's, we're setting the baseline, the foundation for can we and should we operate a, a fully fledged recreational catch and release fishery going forward. Bluefin tuna are an amazing fish. They can live up to 40 years. They're built for speed. They can dive down thousands of feet. Well, they're just the ultimate fish in the water. They're the, uh, like I said, they're, they're the Formula One fish. They're the racing car of the sea. Well, it's just the, their stature, the way they're built, the way they they move, you know, the, the way their feeding habits, you know, just they're just the ultimate the ultimate fish. Yeah, I mean, they're known throughout the world to be probably the number one sports fish or game fish that's that's targeted. Some of the tuna that UK anglers caught and tagged last year were tracked by scientists for 365 days. They discovered the fish returned within a few meters to where they were tagged. Uh, the chart program in England last year, which is you know unparalleled um, in terms of the amount of information we have about that interaction between anglers and bluefin. You know we tagged over seven hundred fish last year against estimates of around two hundred and fifty. We thought we'd we'd tag the tuna are, are very big. Most are around two meters. Um, you get some. I think our smallest was probably about one point four meters, but the smaller ones are the the rarer ones. And then we had one up to, uh, well, we had two actually at 96 inches last year. So, um, you know, these are eight foot long fish and you know, they're very big. There's no, nothing else in English waters to compare. The government has extended the bluefin tuna tagging season until December this year. It means more fish will be caught, tagged and released. It's not just good news for the scientists that track this huge predator. It also boosts the coastal communities. Plenty of bluefin. I've got plenty of bookings. I'm pretty solidly booked. I've got 60 or so bookings at the moment. Um, yeah, just hoping that it, it, it sort of kicks off early and we get out there and you know, sort of get stuck in. You know, it's again, you know, October is normally your sort of cut off point for fishing for charter vessels. So, you know, there's 25 charter vessels involved this year. They've upped it by 10, 10 boats. I'm fortunate enough to be one of those involved. And uh, yeah, it brings a lot of revenue to uh, otherwise, I would say a pretty quiet, dormant sort of Cornwall. You know, it's bringing in trade for restaurants, pubs, bed and breakfasts. So yeah, it's, 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 it's good for the county. For Cornwall and, and anywhere these fish appear, I believe it's gonna be of great benefit to the local economy. Um, I know from my own experience last year, we did, I think it was 58 trips in total. Um, and anglers came down and many of those anglers stayed in hotels and were eating in um, restaurants. So the, the, um, the benefit of local economy is immense. The future is bright for anglers who want to catch the majestic fish. The UK Bluefin Tuna Association hopes to see recreational fishing next year. DEFRA may require additional boats to be licensed and skippers to have training. I think we'd like to see a recreational fishery because this is a wonderful fishery and we would like it to be shared amongst a, a larger participating audience if you like it, it's not really fair or certainly some people would view it not fair that it, at the moment it's it's uh, limited to uh, a minority and um, of course if we open up to a recreational fishery it's got to be properly managed we, it can't be a free-for-all we know that these fish um, have to be taken care of um, they they'll fight all the way to the boat but very very quickly give up and if they're not cared for correctly uh, they will die. So anyone who gets a license to fish, if we have a recreational fishery, must be uh, qualified uh, at least attend a course um, because it's important that we do protect these fish. Oh, it's massive. I mean, it's massive. It will just involve everybody. It will let other anglers come in. You know, other boats will be involved. It's just, you know, it's, it's just a magical moment, really, for, you know, a dream come true. And I'm just very, very... I can't tell you how privileged I am to uh, be doing this bluefin fishing. It, uh, it's a fish that messes with your brain. When the season ends, you can't sleep. And when you do wake up, there's a tuna running on the end of your line. It's, um, it's phenomenal. For more about the work of the UK Bluefin Tuna Association, you can visit their Facebook page, 
Bluefin Tuna, UK.